Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to send this message to the annual conference on Belgian foreign policy, and I thank the organizers for asking me to participate. The elimination of nuclear weapons, which remains the United Nations' highest disarmament priority, is at a precipitous juncture. Multiple emerging trends are appending the status quo and causing us to re-evaluate the efficacy of the machinery established to bring about that goal. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres recognized this in his recently launched Common Agenda and its pursuit of a new agenda for peace, highlighting the evolving geostrategic context and the need to advance nuclear disarmament as a means of achieving a more peaceful world. Over the course of the last half of a century, the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, better known as the NPT, has proven remarkably durable in pursuit of a world free of nuclear weapons. It has cemented itself as the cornerstone of the nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation regime and, consequently, as a pillar of international peace and security. Following its indefinite extension in 1995, the NPT evolved from a Cold War era instrument to the de facto multilateral negotiation forum on the elimination of nuclear weapons. It has remained so for three key reasons. One, its binding disarmament commitments. Two, its verifiable non-proliferation obligations. And three, its new universal membership, which makes the vast majority of the international community, including five nuclear weapon states, subject to these commitments and obligations. The 10th MPT Review Conference, confirmed for January 2022, is an opportunity to ensure the treaty stays fit for purpose amidst a raft of emerging challenges and opportunities. Because the treaty will need to adapt once more. The nuclear landscape is shifting as it moves away from a bipolar nuclear order. Trust between nuclear weapon states is at all-time low. Dialogue is largely absent and transparency is waning. New technologies and domains in cyber and outer space, along with conventional weapons with strategic impact, have exposed potential vulnerabilities in long-entrenched doctrines of deterrence. Those same technologies are also lowering the barriers to proliferation. The disarmament machinery is stuck, and the arms control regime is down to a single instrument, New START. In short, nuclear risks are accelerating rapidly to levels not seen since the 1980s. The MPT Review Conference is an opportunity to course correct. It is a chance for the international community to lower the temperature, to narrow divergences, and to begin the hard work of getting back onto the path of a world free of nuclear weapons. In order to achieve this goal, I believe that any outcome from the review conference should include the following. First, a reaffirmation of support for the MPT and all its goals, and to the implementation of all commitments undertaken as states' parties. Second, a reaffirmation of the norm against the use of nuclear weapons and a commitment to a world free of nuclear weapons. Third, agreements on practical measures to reduce the risk of nuclear war. These include enhanced transparency, dialogue and confidence-building measures, as well as changes to doctrine and deployment and measures to address the growing nexus between emerging technologies and nuclear weapons. Fourth, any risk reduction measures 
to pave the way for actual steps in disarmament, including commitments to further arsenal reductions or commitments not to develop or deploy new and dangerous weapon types. Fifth, the enduring strength of the safeguard system cannot be taken for granted, especially in the face of changing proliferation drivers related to regional tension and technological advancement. The conference should agree on ways to bolster the system at a minimum through the universalization of the Comprehensive Safeguards Agreement. Sixth, the conference should decide how it can add value to resolving long-running regional proliferation crises in the Middle East and Asia. None of this will be easy. It will require states' parties to maintain the level of flexibility and compromise they have shown throughout the review conference's extended postponement. It will require them to be willing to listen and to negotiate in good faith. I hope this conference can develop some innovative ideas to help achieve the goals I have outlined, and I look forward to hearing those ideas in due course. I thank you very much for your attention.